There are just 144 days left until election, so campaign season is heating up. I'm joined with one of your candidates for sheriff right now, Bill Grove. Bill, thank you for being with me this morning. Thank you for having me, John. <laughs> All right, Bill, could you give our viewers a little bit of, about your background? Sure. Uh, I started my law enforcement career in 1996 with the Florida Department of Corrections up in Central Florida. Uh, I worked with the Department of Corrections, was transferred down to South Florida in 1998 and promoted to sergeant. Uh, I stayed with them until 2002 where I transitioned over to law enforcement on the road mm -hmm. uh, with a small department in Dade County. I worked there for several years as a background investigator, a trainer, uh, a detective, and in 2005 decided to join the Monroe County Sheriff's Office as okay. the patrol deputy. Okay. And now why, why have you made the decision, Bill, to run for sheriff? Well, uh, my, my time at the Sheriff's Office, I actually am now no longer at the Sheriff's Office. I'm with the State Attorney's Office as an investigator. I left in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, during my time at the Sheriff's Office, um, I, I, was, I worked with a lot of good professional people and I mm -hmm. saw a lot of good deputies leave the agency for various, various different reasons. Um, and I kept asking people what was going on with the agency, why the agency couldn't keep people here once they had them here. Mm -hmm. So I saw a serious problem in employee retention at the sheriff's office. Something I felt like, and everybody I talked to about it and questioned about it would say, well, that's just the way it is. It's been like that in the Keys for 30 years and there's nothing you can do about that. Mm -hmm. But um, I really felt like there is some things we can do about it. Mm -hmm. It's a great community and I realized that the sheriff's office is never going to be able, the sheriff's office in Monroe County is never going to be able to compete with other larger agencies in South Florida mm -hmm. with the pay scale. Mm -hmm. um, we're just not going to be able to. We're not. 3,500 uh, deputies, we're not a 3,500 person uh, department like Miami-Dade, uh, but we can compete in other areas, I believe. Mm -hmm. I believe we can compete um, with our quality of life and, and focusing on our community to attract more experienced officers, more qualified officers to come down to the Keys, mm -hmm. fall in love with our community like I did and, mm -hmm. and you did and mm -hmm. like everybody does, right. and stay in the community. Mm -hmm. And I think that how that benefits our citizens is if we keep getting young officers who come to the county mm -hmm. and we spend the expense, we, our sheriff's office pays for them to train them, mm -hmm. it costs $88,000 to train a law enforcement officer to get him up to speed, fully trained and on the road by himself where he can go answer calls and be of service to us in the community. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, in 2008, the sheriff's office turnover rate was 12.8%. There's a total of 565 employees at the sheriff's office. So let's just, to make it easier for my math, <laughs> if it's only 10 officers a year we lose, that's $880,000 a year that we're losing. It's a reoccurring expense. It's a constant expense. And I've been a trainer, a law enforcement trainer at Miami-Dade Community College at the police academy there. I've been a trainer at the Upper Keys Police Academy here for, for several years. So I see a lot of the, the kids coming through the program and it's just a shame that we keep losing them and having to, have to pay that expense over and over again. Right, right. And I think we could, we could use that money more wisely mm -hmm. rather than work to have the, the agency work to keep those officers here mm -hmm. and we not only save on that training expense, right. but we benefit from those officers' experience. Mm -hmm. Having started my law enforcement career in 1996, I can tell you, and being a trainer, I can tell you that I don't, well, that at least I don't believe, mm -hmm law enforcement officers really come into kind of feeling their way in their job, really knowing what they're doing in their job for about three or four years. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is sometimes it's, it might be, uh, might be not really uh, politically correct to say this, but mm -hmm. sometimes police officers can be a little aggressive, mm -hmm. a little uh, maybe talk to people in the public ways they shouldn't talk to them. Mm -hmm just don't understand how to talk to people and deal with people. Now that comes from a lot of things. It comes from youth, mm -hmm. uh, it comes from you know, the, the immense power and responsibility that law enforcement officers have. Right. A lot. The problem w with that and young people and young officers, and how I'm, I'm trying to relate this to how the young officers are affecting our community, we're constantly having to retrain officers, so we're constantly getting a new group of young officers in. The, the older officers know how to deal with people and are more experienced and they basically treat people better. Mm -hmm. They know they would talk to you like, like you would expect them to talk to you if they mm -hmm. pulled you over for a ticket, not mm -hmm. like you've robbed a bank or, right, right. or just shot somebody. Mm -hmm. 
What I mean is, just think about the law enforcement officers in the community you know here, mm -hmm. and how they treat people in the community much differently. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that the people are getting away with crimes. Right. I just mean they're, they're spoken to in a respectful manner, the way that we want everybody to speak to us. Mm -hmm. I always liken it to um, you know, how I would want a law enforcement officer to speak to my grandmother mm -hmm. if she called. And even if the law enforcement officer thought it was a nonsense thing, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want her to be spoken down to. Right. Or, or, and no, we don't want anybody to be spoken down to. Right. You want everybody to be treated with respect. Right. <laughs> right. All right, Bill. Well, if people want more information on you, they can check out your website, growforsheriff.com. And do you have a schedule on your website of yes, where so you're going to be? We have current events coming up, and you can also follow us on Facebook. We kind of are more up to date with that than uh, the website. But uh, absolutely, you can check out the website and follow us on Facebook. And please remember us on August 14th. All right. Thank you so much for being with me this morning and for sharing all of this with our viewers. Thank you, Jenna. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back after these messages.